Hello everyone and happy Wednesday. I'm extremely excited today because we are joined by a real LinkedIn pro, Austin from none other than LinkedIn, which is super exciting because Austin is an expert in LinkedIn profiles who has delivered a TEDx talk about LinkedIn strategies, personally optimized over 1100 LinkedIn profiles and helped individuals to land jobs at their dream companies and receive nearly 300 job offers from LinkedIn recruiters and counting. So in the next hour, Austin's going to review a selection of your profiles and share some practical tips and advice on how they can be improved and quick optimizations you can do today to improve your LinkedIn profile. Not only that, we do these sessions live so we can answer the questions that you want to know the answers to. So drop those questions into the chat and we'll do our best to get through as many as possible. But first, a big warm welcome to Austin. Yay. Thank you for coming. No, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, really excited. Huge fan of, of Scrimba, everything that you're doing and also the, the audience, you know, the community that you've built. So really excited to be here and um, help out with as many LinkedIn profiles as we can get to. Yeah, absolutely. Many of you have sent in your profiles for us to look at. We will try our hardest to get through all of them, but we're also here to answer any questions you may have. And let's kick off with one of those because we're talking about profile optimization, but what actually is that, Austin? Yeah, uh, that's, that's a great question. Uh, pretty much there's like, two sides of LinkedIn. There's the profile side, kind of hoping people find you, and then the active side of like going out, creating content, networking. So the profile optimization side is pretty much like making sure your profile has all of the keywords necessary to appear in recruiter searches, but also to tell your story, you know, include that personality. So if someone, that statistic of like, oh, on average, your resume has eight seconds. If that was the same with the LinkedIn profile, like the goal is to make it so they, they stay for five seconds longer or 10 seconds longer uh, by having all of the things needed to appear in searches. That is interesting. Do you think that statistic is actually true that you get such a tiny time frame for people to look at your profile? I, I'm curious about that because I've heard the, of, of resumes all the time, but when I was recruiting, I personally spent more time on LinkedIn because it's not limited to one page. And so it's, there's just so much uh, info that you can source through. But at a first glance, if there was a profile that I didn't like, I didn't even spend time looking through it. So sometimes it's even shorter. Sometimes if it caught our attention, then we'd spend longer. But yeah. I'm curious to see like if there was a stat about that. Totally. Well, what we do know is that it is a short time frame to make a big impression. So let's kick right off with looking at some profiles. What I will do is share the profiles for Austin to look at, and he will, um, yeah, give his tips and advice. Even if this isn't your profile, the advice can still apply if I'm not mistaken, Austin, is that Absolutely, okay? yes. Yes, brilliant. Well, this obviously isn't one, this is Scrimba. Um, <laughs> but the first one I would love to have a look at is right here. Marinella, okay. very interesting one here. Uh, what's your take on this, Austin? Yes, absolutely. So first thing that I see is uh, great, great profile picture, great cover photo. Uh, but it also is interesting that there's a mixture of keywords from English and then I'd imagine that's Swedish. Uh, not mm -hmm. sure since I don't speak it. And so immediately I'm a little confused as who the target audience is. If this profile is trying to attract jobs that speak English versus uh, Swedish speaking jobs. And so the, the headline is in English, but the about section is not. And so uh, that's one immediate opportunity to, to optimize the profile is that you can create your profile in entirely new languages. So I'd recommend right off the bat to have an English profile and a Swedish profile. And both of them can attract 
recruiters who speak the language that default is English or default is Swedish. Oh, really? So is that completely separate profiles or it's just something you can set within one profile? So yeah, that's that's for, you can only do it on the desktop version of LinkedIn. Um, in fact, if you have to click on your profile to see, like, uh, I'm not sure if you want to see how to do it. I can I can explain that real quick. Yeah, uh, let's have a yeah, look. So click on view profile and then yeah, right there yeah. underneath uh, in the top right quarter, corner, it says add profile in another language. Um, nice. To the, right there. <laughs> yes. So you can add, you choose the language, whatever the language is, and then pretty much it creates your profile in a, in a new language and it shows your existing profile. So you can literally direct translate if you want um, oh, wow. or create an entirely new story depending on what you want to do. And then from there, recruiters and people can toggle between the English or Swedish version of your profile. Wow, I did not know that. That is good to know and hopefully can help Marinella. Brilliant tip. Anything else that caught your eye about this profile? Yeah, um, from what I can read, so just the English parts, um, the, the headline currently says like full stack web developer looking for internship, um, which I like the full stack web developer part, but the, uh, the rest, it's using maybe one fourth of the total number of, of characters that you can use in a headline. Mm. Uh, you can have up to 220. So the fact that this is using maybe 50 characters means that there's a lot of unused potential for the headline. Mm. Um, and so I'd recommend adding skills pretty much like in the, in the cover photo, you see JavaScript, PHP, HTML, C++. I would add those in the headline because that can be scraped, but the but the cover photo, um, the algorithm can't scrape the words since that's just a PDF. But if mm -hmm. you do add those in the cover photo, in the headline, then you can appear for words if a recruiter is looking for JavaScript, PHP, HTML, et cetera. Got it. Yeah, excellent. So would you say it's best to use the full 220 characters and really beef out the headline then? Uh, if you have enough to, I'll be honest, 220 looks like a lot. It's like a full chunk. I personally use, I think, 160. Um, mm. But if you have enough experience to do it, then yes, go for it. And I'd also recommend instead of saying looking for internships, since that's like a lot of opportunity cost, you could use 20 characters to replace that. I would just use the the open to work feature instead, which mm. comes across as looking for internship, like says the same message. Yeah, so this is, I've seen it on some profiles. Uh, it adds a kind of banner around your profile picture. I don't know if it does anything else, maybe adds a tag somewhere. Yeah, so there's there's two options when you say open to work. You can say only let recruiters know that I'm open to work, which when they go in the LinkedIn recruiter platform, they can see. Um, but people who have the regular LinkedIn profile like can't see. So she could, uh, Marinella could have uh, the setting set only to recruiters and we'd never know. But if you mm -hmm. set it to public, then it has that green little uh, banner that says open to work. Right, yeah. So if you were looking for a job but didn't want your current employer to know, for example. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you could do it without the banner, but if you're happy for everyone to know, you can do it with. 100%. Yeah. A few people in the chat are asking how to add your profile. We can't accept any profiles for this time because it wouldn't be fair to the people that have already submitted them in advance. However, we do plan to do more of these in the future. So just hit subscribe on YouTube, on Scrimba's YouTube channel, and we'll make announcements of when the next one will be. Yes, speaking of the next one, <laughs> let's move on to another profile. This here caught my eye because uh, it's a bit of a career change from what I can figure out. Currently, assistant principal at a high school. Mm -hmm. What do you think of this one, Austin? Yeah, uh, right off the bat from the top card, um, what I can see is um, clean, cover, uh, clean profile picture, no cover photo, which is a, a missed opportunity to, to mm -hmm. establish a first impression. 
always recommend having a cover photo. Um, and then let's see, yeah, assistant principal uh, at the high school, you know, I'm really interested where it says providing services in logo design, print design. So I'm curious, like what this, uh, I guess, shift in career looks like, you know, mm -hmm. how they became interested in um, graphic design, brand design, and if they have any experience. So that's just from the top card. Yeah. And going back a bit to the profile header photo, I think it's called, mm -hmm. people might be wondering how they can make one of those. Do you have any tips on that? Yes, uh, absolutely. So a few different things you can use. If you're good at graphic design, which I personally am not really, uh, Canva is a great free option that you can use. Um, so Canva is free. Um, and then also you can find cover you can find cover photos on stock websites. Uh, some people even use Google. Um, and if you don't know what to do, try and find something like relevant to you. You know whether that's you can and if someone asked you like why did you pick this cover photo and you just said I don't know it was a pretty picture that I saw online. You know that's that's not the goal. You want it to be like oh this is my hometown or oh this is a photo of the university I attended. This is my dream job, my dream career. Or also you could, if you have pictures of you public speaking, like on a stage or a portfolio of projects that you're working on, then you can use your banner to kind of portray all of those different things. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so this is Canva, if you want to get involved here. There is, um, well, usually in Canva, there are kind of pre-made things like templates and whatnot. Yes. So if you're not too brilliant at design, you can maybe use one of those and adapt it with your favorite colors of things. <laughs> like, like costume yes, stuff. huge fan of Canva because like you said, I, I'm not naturally like design, but you can take these templates and change up the colors, do whatever you want with that. Yeah, it's very easy to use as well, I've found. Absolutely. So, yes. Totally get behind that one, link in the chat. Yes, and um, back to this profile. Anything else that caught your eye about this? Um, yeah, if you can continue scrolling down, let's see um, how things look. Okay, um, from the about section, uh, it looks like this is what I'd say 80%, 90% of about sections look like, which kind of looks like it could be a copy and paste from a resume summary where you know you're not using first person language you should use first person language in your about mm -hmm. section but also a lot of um it, resume summaries are kind of that third person distance like experienced mm -hmm. uh in this field looking for a fast pace uh you know solutions oriented professional you know that kind of thing and so i would switch it up and and first tell a story especially where you're an assistant principal high school like at a high school tell a story of like i got into education but i decided you know i'm really interested in graphic design tell that story or like how did you how are you trying to shift your career that kind of thing um and then the experience section it has the titles of where they work but nothing filled out um mm. so that's a huge area of opportunity to optimize is by adding those bullet points of kind of like resume bullet points or even talking about what the companies are that you work at. Got it. Yeah. That is interesting um, what you said about the about section. So we're kind of programmed, I think, for your CV to not use I, I mm -hmm. first person. So it's the opposite here on LinkedIn. Then. Yes, uh -huh, definitely. Um, where... Yeah. LinkedIn, uh, that is the best practice that everyone uh, shares is LinkedIn. Yes, it does work like a CV, but also it's like a cover letter as well. Like with your cover letter, you know, you use I, you tell kind of like why you're interested in the companies or your experience. And so since you're not limited to a page, tell your story, share some personality, what, what you like to do, that kind of thing. Yeah. And what kind of length would you be looking at for this then? Yes, I think uh, it all depends on what you do. I usually recommend like five paragraphs. Um, the first paragraph is like a hook, um, like 
pretty much like every article you read on Google, you know, it, the first one is just to get you interested uh, to click more. The second one covers like the past, like where have you been? What have you done? Present, what are you currently doing? Uh, what's your job? Do you enjoy it? Future, like what are you interested in doing? Um, like what career aspirations do you have? And then like a, a skills paragraph that's solely dedicated to sharing like the, the skills that you have. And that adds to like help you appear in searches, but also helps a recruiter if they don't have five minutes to parse through your entire profile, they can come to this section and see like, oh, they have the skills needed to fit the job description that I'm looking for. Nice. So just to recap, that's hook, past, present, future, and your skills. Here you go. Put that in the chat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I did put enter, but it seems to have mashed it all into one big word, but hopefully. <laughs> we, we, got, we got the, the caps to, to yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully that will help. Anyway, one question here from Vibor says, what can I put in my about section? As I'm fresh out of college, I'm sure this is the case for many people. What would you recommend in there? Absolutely. And I personally love optimizing profiles for college students. Uh, in college, it's not really taught how to use LinkedIn. Um, I had to learn a lot, but I ended up getting about 200 job offers in LinkedIn as a college student. Um, nice. With that, if you're fresh out of college and you don't have too much work experience, then you can talk about projects that you've done um, in in school. You know, you're literally dedicating hours and hours and hours to these projects. So you can talk about those uh, projects that you've done. Also, club experience. Like, have you been a part of any clubs? What projects, events have you worked on? Um, and also, you can just talk about like volunteer experience. So instead of necessarily like all of the paid experiences you still have experience. So highlight those as well. Excellent. And that brings me to the next profile, which had something a little um, interesting, I guess. Um, so this is Sean. And what caught my eye on this one was that Sean mentioned somewhere a fraternity, which I now can't find. I hope it was this one. Here we go. Yes. Uh, what's your take on adding fraternities or sororities or those kind of clubs into your LinkedIn profile? Yeah, I, I wish I was more familiar with like fraternities at my college. They didn't have any. But um, with that being said, regardless of this part, what I do wish that Sean did have is a description of why he's putting it in the section that he does. Like, um, mm -hmm mentioning so you know with this alone it kind of leaves the question in so like me and you were both like oh like why is that in the volunteer section but if there was one or two or, th or three paragraphs that talks about Sean's time in this fraternity uh what did they do what kind of services did they offer how did they volunteer or like give back to the community then that's 100 percent a great thing that you can include uh but leaving that out, it kind of leaves the question of like, oh, why, why is that there? That kind of thing. Yeah. So I, 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 to answer your question, with the, the information to back it, I think it definitely can be here. Um, but as is, I'm like, oh, maybe that just belongs under education at this moment. Because he does have it included in activities and societies, but mm. um, it's also repeated in volunteer section. Interesting, which suggests that there was some volunteering involved. But as yeah, you say, it would be good but, to... But we have yeah. no idea what. So it's just kind of there yeah. for the moment. Make the most of it and uh, highlight what you did. Yeah, mm -hmm. brilliant. Anything else about this profile you'd like to comment on? I see the about section is quite a big one. Yeah, so looking at this, uh, his about section talks about software engineering, um, and the the skills that he has as a as a software engineer. Um, also, the about section mentions this, but the experience section is mostly uh, digital marketing, so content marketing, SEO, digital marketing, etc. Sales development, where you don't see experience as a software engineer. So I think that's another opportunity. Like as a recruiter, if I were looking at this, 
I'd be a little confused where it's like, oh, Sean definitely has like the skills that I want and uh, mentions that he's a software engineer, but here in the experience section, I don't see any software engineer experience. I see marketing experience. So I think that's a great area to address in the about section, you know, kind of counter that objection of um, I spent this much time in the marketing realm and I transitioned or am transitioning into software engineering because, or like what made you passionate about this, this career shift? So I think that that's an area. Um, recruiters would immediately look at the experience section, see that he was previously a marketer and then wonder, oh, what made you want to become a software engineer? Excellent, yes. Let's look at some uh, questions from the chat now. Um, talking about experience just now, one question here says, is it necessary to mention all your previous job experience? Now, I'm sure this is something that a lot of people are going to be interested in. What do you think, Austin? Great, absolutely great question. Um, and my answer to that would be, you should include all of your relevant previous job experience um, to the industry that you're in. So for example, um, I personally, have not include like I've removed like three or four of my job experiences from college uh, and like a little before that that I used to have when I was looking for those kind of jobs. But now that I'm focused on solely sales and marketing, I removed my kind of accounting jobs that I had or other things like that. Um, if so, pretty much this is also another topic of let's say you had a job 10 years ago, or even like in high school, people are like, oh, you shouldn't have anything in high school. I disagree in the sense that if you worked in the industry, you know, if I was, um, if I did engineering or like an engineering internship in high school and all that stuff, and I'm looking for that kind of role right now, I would keep that and like, just write a good description in that experience section saying why you have it there, like what types of skills that you developed, but, um, at the same time, if you're looking for engineering roles, you don't necessarily want to include your uh, your job at the grocery store from high school. Like as long as you can tie in how it's relevant, um, I think I don't think that you should have 20 experiences listed because there's no way people are going to look at all of those. So focus on the most relevant experiences uh, in the past five six years or uh, that you have um, for the company so that you're applying to. Got it. Perfect. A few more questions coming in, and they're all great ones, so I'll ask them now. Um, this one is interesting. Um, I want to know if a recruiter uses an age filter, e.g., would my profile appear in recruiter searches if my age is above 35? Now, I guess my first question is, does LinkedIn actually know your age? It probably does knowing technology these days. I guess it can work it out from the amount of experience you have, maybe when you went to college and so on and so forth. Is there anything on the recruiter side that filters in that way? You you actually just nailed it. Um, LinkedIn does have an age filter, but as a best practice, people know not really to use it because it's not that accurate. Um, the age is based, of the age is generated by uh, the year that you graduated college. And so um, since that's like a lot of privacy um, information that LinkedIn can't be sharing, like targeted people by age, you know, necessarily uh, it's calculated by your college graduation date. But that once again, people are like, oh, some people went to school for six or seven years or also like took gap years or half of the workforce, you know, a lot of the workforce never even went to college. And so it's a very, it's not a very accurate filter to use. So people usually go for job seniority instead or um, years of experience, which is calculated by summing up the total number of like years uh, of experience on your profile. No, oh, interesting. As you say, it can't be very accurate either way because, well, you know, some people go to college when they're 12. It's <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. Uh -huh. And so yeah. um, that's not a very often used filter. Um, and even if it was, I don't, 
I've never, maybe it's been a minute, but I never saw the opportunity to filter by like 35 and up or 30 and below, that kind of thing. Got it. But don't quote me on that because, yeah, it might have changed since then. <laughs> yeah. I hope that puts your mind at rest. KK. Now, question here from Asadi. Are projects really important for recruiters? Uh, do they even take a look at the project section, uh, which I can show one now? Well, this is the featured section in which you can put projects. I don't know. Is there another project separate section? Oh, there is. Yes. Yes, there is. Um, and the project section is very valuable for students. I'd say the project mm -hmm. section is very valuable for um, students and people who might not have, you know, that internship experience um, or work experience, kind of like in a tiered ladder uh, recruiters always look first at like the, the experience section, you know, do you have internships? Do you have job experience in this area? And if not, then they're like, all right, we'll continue looking, you know, at the projects um, in school. What types of projects did you work on? What types of, how relevant was it to um, the work that you would be doing? And so I would say, yes, projects are important, especially if you are a student who doesn't have as much uh, internship or work experience as others, which you should definitely leverage the, the project section then. Makes total sense. Going back to the nifty trick you showed us earlier where you can add a different version of your LinkedIn profile for another language, Kidsay wants to know if that will help to optimize the search index. It will in the sense that you will appear for searches in both languages. Um, mm. For example, um, <clears throat> you can have, this is another thing. So let's say, for example, on the, in the skills section, you can have up to 50 skills on your profile for each language. So if I added 50 skills in English and then I added those same 50 skills or 25 of the same skills, but 25 others in Spanish or German or a different language, then I can appear for searches that recruiters are doing of the German uh, skill that isn't on my English profile, but I'll appear because it's on my German profile. Um, or so it gives you the opportunity to appear in that much more searches depending on what language the recruiters are searching for. So yes, it does help your profile to appear more searches. Got it. Thanks for the tip there. Right, let's move on now to another profile. Here we have Timothy. Now, Timothy has a very, in my opinion, let me know if you disagree, <laughs> professional looking uh, header, nice headshot. This is the open to work banner we were mentioning earlier um yeah what's your take on this profile uh likewise i i agree that the the first impression is very clean very neat um i like the it's pretty simple you know the the cover photo has uh timothy's sign off um something like relevant you see the computer which is like oh timothy must work with computers and when you read the the headline it's like yep full stack developer and this is a great example also of a keyword headline that you can use to appear in searches mm -hmm. um, of CSS, SQL, React, Node, all of that. Um, if a recruiter types in those keywords, Timothy will be more likely to appear. So I think this part looks great. Um, one thing that I, I do see, Jacksonville, Florida, this is, this is now getting into like more advanced tips. Uh, the location says Jacksonville, Florida, which is a specific city in um, Florida. But what I recommend is to always pick the largest city option that appears in your drop down menu. Um, so, for example, uh, Jacksonville, Florida, there would be like a Jacksonville metropolitan area option or something like that. So, for example, if you live in New York City, you can pick. New York City, New York, or New York metropolitan area. And that opens you up to the entire search of the, like 
it expands the area that you can appear in for searches. Mm -hmm. So looking at this, I would recommend to Timothy to make uh, his location bigger um, than just mm -hmm. Jacksonville. That is interesting to know. Yeah, little hot tip there. Brilliant. So hopefully Timothy is watching or will watch later. Yeah. <laughs> expand that. Now this caught my eye. I don't know what Likewise. this is. Is uh, this the thing related to the banner or is it something No, else? Uh, if you scroll down, then that means that that's his most recent um, job. So oh. if we scroll down right ah. there. Okay. So yeah. uh, up in that top card, it always shows like the your job logo. Um, and so since he's not currently working anywhere, it shows up there. Um, right. And he wrote the company as seeking new employment opportunity, which is why it uh, it appeared up there. Got it. So what's your take on this? Is this a, a good thing to do or should he tweak it somehow? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I think that uh, I personally would... Um, enjoy the the career transition and make it longer. Um, so not necessarily the aspiring software developer, um, but rather adding the career transition, the career break, and then adding those same skills and uh, keywords that he uses in aspiring software developer, um, but in the career transition. But uh, another tip that you could do uh, if um, that I think would look cleaner is you see that gray logo to the left of aspiring software developer? Mm, this one here. Then that means that means that a company doesn't have a company page on on LinkedIn, which doesn't look as clean. It looks like less professional because mm. they're like, oh, you're not working for a company that is like legit or it has like a LinkedIn company page, which almost every company does these days. Yeah. Um, one thing that you can do if you want to keep that is create your own company page. Um, you know, and name it like Timothy, you know, like Timothy freelancing opportunity or something like that. Um, create a logo and then add your profile um, as an employee to the company that you created. So it has your own like company logo and it's a lot cleaner. And then it shows like that you're doing um, kind of like software that you're trying to do like software development uh freelancing or that kind of thing. So you could almost use that as a kind of portfolio, sounds like. It's a bit of Absolutely. a difference. Yeah, so I've, I've heard that tip by a lot of people. I've I've seen people use it successfully of if you're not, if you don't have that job, uh, you know, if it's that gray logo, then instead create your own company, create a logo, uh, add that to your experience section and then name the company, uh, like your company title and then explain like what you do, what you're interested in, or like what you're doing in the meantime while you're looking for a job that will make you a better software developer. Like in these past five months, what have you been doing to build your software developer skills? And what are you, what projects are you working on to continue building that experience? Good one, nice tips there. They've mentioned here a career transition slash career break. Are they really the same thing or should they be separated out in some way? Uh, yeah, so I don't think that there's a way to change career break. Like that is a LinkedIn option, um, oh. uh, but you can call it what it is, uh, like career transition. Some people say maternity leave, paternity leave or laid off mm -hmm. um, or anything like that. Um, the reason why a lot of people choose to add these is if someone came to this profile and the last thing on the experience section was mechanical design engineer. And it said January, 2022. Um, recruiters might be like, what have you been doing for the last eight months? You know, yeah. and so you can add that career transition to explain. It, uh, Timothy does a good job right here saying like, I decided to do a career transition. And so I used this time to go to a coding boot camp, you know, at Full Stack Academy, um, or I would, recommend adding like what skills you learned at that coding boot camp, what types of things you developed, but that's a good way to counter the objection of like, oh, what have you been doing for eight months? Oh, I see you went to a coding boot camp. Yeah. So one last thing I'd recommend instead of saying career transition, you could say career transition, but also uh, name that 
co- like graduated from coding boot camp, you know, instead of career transition. Because some people might see that and not even look at the description. But if you add coding boot camp, full stack academy, then that's great as well. Yeah, I was going to suggest that as well, actually, because going to a coding boot camp is quite a big deal, you know. I, I would really, Absolutely. Yeah. Make sure you highlight it. <laughs> really. <laughs> Um, speaking of career transitions, we have a very interesting profile here. Alexei, at Scrimba, we have quite a few people who have been in careers for many years and now want to transition, as is the case with Alexei. So Alexei was a zookeeper for 25 plus years, now working as a freelance software engineer. Do you have any tips on how Alexei can optimize this profile? Yeah, um, great, great question. And for Alexei, I'd say anytime that you've been in a career for that amount of time and you're now making a transition, um, it's a lot. So Alexei will have to do a little bit more than a typical person to to prove to recruiters or show um, the skills that Alexei has as a full stack developer software engineer. And so what this could look like is, first of all, the about section will be your best friend in telling your story of like, um, there's no doubt someone looks at your profile and they see that you are a zookeeper for 20 plus years. And so use that to your advantage, you know, don't hide that and like tell people like, you know, embrace it, that you were a zookeeper for that amount of time, but also highlight no one knows what zookeepers do or what, they, what they've what they learned. So like highlight it, tell people like why being a zookeeper for that amount of time will give you an unfair advantage as a software, as a, as a software engineer. You know, what skills did you develop? What did you learn? Or like what perspective? Um, do you have that no other software engineer has, but also that's a awesome story, you know, as like a, as a zookeeper, you know, everyone thinks like, Oh, you know, I wish I knew more about what that is or what you do. Write content, you know, like post, even if it's just like once a month or a little bit more embrace your story, tell people like, yeah, I was a zookeeper post pictures of you at the zoo, uh, like with animals and then be like, I'm a zookeeper turned software engineer. Um, and then talk about your story, your journey, and that will help get your profile out to more people, but also raise awareness to, Hey, it's not a bad thing. I, um, I developed skills. I'm proud of my experience. Um, and now this, this career transition makes perfect sense for me because X, Y, and Z. So kind of embracing it and highlighting the transferable skills that Alexei has. Uh, that will help him to do to become a better software engineer and a lot of that will be done through the about section and also content creation absolutely i think this is a great opportunity for content creation i can imagine some blog posts like what feeding tigers taught me about javascript or yes. <laughs> <laughs> something like that so yeah yeah great. and like if you if you have a picture of you feeding a tiger or like <laughs> you with the drafts and all that stuff like you probably have so many cool photos that people go to the zoo one time and like take a picture with the draft from far away, but you're in it with the actual animals and then like highlighting it, like exactly what you said, how that taught you how to be better at CSS or something yeah, like that. Totally. Maybe you could also use this experience to build something for your project. So we always advise at Scrimba, build something that solves a problem you've experienced. So if it's been, I don't know, difficult to line up the penguins to give them their fish or something, maybe you can <laughs> build some kind of tracker <laughs> or yes. whatever it is you need it as a zookeeper. Love that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so like like I said, for Alexei, at the from the beginning, like at first glance, people would be like, oh, maybe hesitant to hire someone who was in uh, zookeeping for that amount of time. But once you start creating a narrative, highlighting it through content creation or even through like visuals and things like that, people will be like, oh, that makes sense. That's so cool. You know, that kind of thing. 
Definitely. And having that point of difference, I think, will help you. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think it might help you get a bit oh, of a conversation going. Absolutely. Just because it's so interesting. Um, yeah. And one other thing is that cover photo. I don't know what that is. Uh, hmm. um, and so I think there is an opportunity right there of adding um, the first impression isn't super strong because someone looks at that and it's like, oh, is it a desert? Um, how is that related to your profile? Uh, if you change that to add like you once again with those animals or you working on computer or even just like a little banner that says um, kind of like Tim's, you know, the uh, name with what you do and stuff like that. Um, yeah. That's that's an opportunity as well. Perfect. Now, John is here in the chat hoping that their profile gets reviewed. So here you are. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> here is John's profile. What's your take on this, Austin? Okay. Yeah. Right off. Right off the bat, I like the the cover photo. Um, it's a, it's simple, clean. Like the code design, collaborate. Cool. Yeah. Um, relates to the experience. Um, immediately, I think there's a lot of opportunity on the headline um, in the sense that you're using maybe 15, 20% of the total capacity of the headline. Yeah. Um, so like what you can do is- it's This bit hit. Yes, exactly. So for people in the job search, one recommendation that I have is the first part can be your job position at the company that you work for. The second part, say experienced, and then fill in like some of the roles, that, like a role that you've had in the past. So UX, UI designer at X company, experienced front end developer. You know, if John has had uh, front end developer experience, then he could say, even if you've had like only a six month internship, that's six months of experience more than a lot of people have ever had. So you can say experienced whatever that past title was. And then two to three skills that you have for the role that you're looking for. So UX, UI designer, experienced front-end developer, and then dash JavaScript, dash HTML, dash, you know, CSS or something like that. That's like a an easy format that job seekers can utilize. Got it. I have done my best to scribble that down here hopefully it's more successful than my last attempt so we have the current job at whatever company it is your experience that should say at never mind and <laughs> then two to three skills for the job you want so if you're looking for a css role you put that in there mm -hmm. yes exactly um and then if we scroll down see john's other experience um Okay, so from the about section, um, it's written in third person. So if you scroll up, you see John is talking about himself in third person. The only, pe oh, actually, it starts out as third person, then transitions to first person. Um, mm -hmm. So I would recommend changing that first line. Um, if you see kind of like that disparity in like John is basically a 100 level and then I'm talented. So it's like, did someone else write that first line for you? And then you wrote the, the second half. So I just changed that first line to, um, to reflect that. And then um, something that I do like about John's profile that I have in my profile that I recommend for other people also is a line that says like what you like to do when you're not at work. He said, I love gaming and playing Call mm -hmm. of Duty, you know, that kind of thing that adds a lot of good personality. Like people can get to know you a lot better. And also like, it's a great opportunity to break the ice with someone. If I was a, a recruiter, you know, I'd be like, oh, you know, I love Call of Duty. What's your favorite one? Like Black Ops too, or, you know, or you, you know, you can have easy conversations just by learning like, oh, I also like playing video games. Like League of Legends is something I play, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, good tip uh, Yes, and then, all right. So the experience section, um, what I'd recommend right there uh, is ALX Africa um, doesn't have any description. One thing that I'd recommend, especially if it's a 
company that a lot of people might not have heard of. Like I've never heard of ALX Africa. Um, so I would add like two to three sentences that talks about what ALX Africa is, what they do, like what products they offer and why, for example, that could be a retail company. Um, and John is looking for roles in at a tech company. So they might be like, oh, yeah, despite being a software engineer, we want software engineers from the tech industry, you know, so that kind of thing. So it gives good context about what the company is and how it's relevant for the roles that you're interested in. Got it. Going back to what you were saying about adding your personality in a line such as this, I have a question which is actually related to my own profile. But um, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It might be relevant to other people. So a while ago, I added this cat in the middle because someone told me that you can then figure out when people are cold messaging you because if they say hello leanne cat emoji or whatever emoji you choose you know that they've somehow scraped your name and it's not a personalized message or something mm. and then just for fun i decided <laughs> to replace the bullet points <laughs> in all my <laughs> um in all my job experience with cats now this Love is because that. i'm not currently job hunting and well, I was just messing around, really. I didn't really think much of it. Um, and also because my cat Pumpkin is a big part of the Scrimba <laughs> community, so it all ties in with that. Anyway, I've noticed since then that I get a lot more messages from recruiters than I used to get. Now, this might just be a coincidence or maybe because I've reached the two-year mark at my current role or whatever. But I wanted to get your opinion if adding something slightly wacky like this actually encourages people to look at and interact with your profile or do you think it was just by chance this happened i i think that that's funny um i think that <laughs> it's uh two two what you mentioned uh i think it can be a combination of a few things one there is a, a search filter that shows people like people can search for um jobs or i guess for candidates who have been at their role for x amount of years and up and so that's right. something that I always did was search for people who have been at their role for two years and up because anything less than one, like they've probably been job hunting or like the job hopping might not be. So that is one potential that now you're appearing in those uh, searches of two years and up at a company. Mm -hmm. um, but also I, I personally think that it's just like adds that fun personality where I'm like, What's, what's with the cats, you know? Like, I want to hear, like, uh, you you mentioned that it's pumpkin, but if I didn't know, if I was a recruiter, I think it's, like, a, a fun little thing that that piques curiosity. But also, yeah. at the same time, like, if you do choose to do something, have a reason why of being, like, instead of be like, it could be something as simple as, I love cats, you know? But if it's just like, oh, I don't know. Um, so you could, I think that that's uh, a funny thing that you can definitely do. Interesting, yeah. On this um, two years and up business, if you're to change role within a company, um, for example, you get promoted, would that then start the counter back it's from zero? At the company, yeah. Um, like, the company. Yes. So that that's the most common one that I use was two years, like, end up at the company because uh, people understand that it's promotions and all that. But what they're trying to prevent is job hoppers of, like, yeah if they look and saw that someone's only been in the past five jobs, they the max they were ever at there was one year and two months, then they might be like, oh, what's to say we hire them and then in one year they leave us as well. That kind of thing. Yes. Thank you for all those spitting cats. Yeah, but I, I love that. I, I think <laughs> I, I saw it in your name, but I, I didn't notice the, uh, uh, <laughs> the bullet points, which yeah. I think it's funny. <laughs> now, we do have one here, which has appeared on a previous stream, implemented the advice and reached out and asked me, could we look again to see if there's anything else um, could be improved? So let's do that. We have Michael LaRocca with his yeah, uh, Star Wars themed <laughs> header, Love which it. I really like. Um, what's your take on this? Is there any further improvement you would suggest? Uh, yes. 
Great question. I like the I like the cover photo in the sense that, um, like you said, has a theme uh, relates to to Michael's um, experience. Also, recruiters do really like uh, having contact information. Um, that was the worst um, that I, as a recruiter, sometimes I experience is like in mails. If you run out of in mail credits then it's like, I can't message as many people. But if I have a, a phone number, then I can text them or email them like my in-mail without using any of my in-mail credits. So that's, nice. that's one thing that I, as a recruiter would have loved. It's like, oh, perfect. It's right there for me. I can uh, call him up right now. Something like yeah. that. Um, Brooklyn, New York, same recommendation as earlier. I would change that to New York metropolitan area because mm -hmm. then you would appear for jobs in all of New York, instead of just jobs physically in Brooklyn, yeah. um, so you would be ex you would be expanding your opportunity to appear in roles much larger. Um, the headline as well, you can you can add more to that. That's probably like one half. So a common theme that you'll see is use your headline. You know, take advantage of the character count, and I would you could double that amount of characters um, right. so impre that's my impressions from the top um okay and then can you click see more so that right there is a good example of the skills paragraph that i mentioned at the beginning of like that's good to have at because right there i see all of those skills that michael has and if i was looking for someone who knew vba javascript css all there i'd be like oh great i know already right now um, but the rest is very parse, uh, is very sparse, doesn't say much about that. So I would add more about who you are, what you've done and what experience you have before jumping into like, uh, why someone should reach it before I'm currently interested in, in these roles, but you need to give them a reason to be interested in reaching out to you of like, this is my experience. This is what I've done. And now I'm looking for a junior front end developer. And then that's pretty much your elevator pitch. Brilliant. On the contact info um, point, Crystal asks here, which is a very good question, actually. I don't want my phone number public to everyone. Is there a way to set it to recruiters only? Yes, I believe so. Yes, because I think that my... Um, my profile is the same way. And I, I agree, I don't want my my um, profile, my phone number showing up to people. Um, I may, what I may have to do is, there's a specific setting uh, that you have to do. Um, so what I'll do is I will take a look at this. Um, I'm gonna take a look after this call uh, to see what it is. And then if you have a way of getting in touch with Crystal or sending, like letting people know, um, I can share with you, Leanne, through LinkedIn or through message, like what the steps are to hide that and set it for only being seen by recruiters. Um, but at this call, as of right now, it might take me a minute to remember how to do that. No worries. Perhaps and what you could do is put a comment under the video so that other people watching it oh, can yeah. also Great. see the info. Perfect. Yes. Brilliant. Now, I know you have to hop off fairly soon because you have another meeting to go to, but let's look at one more profile. Let's and, uh, do it. Speed through it, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Slavin here has a very nice profile. <laughs> um, what's your take? Any quick takeaways Slavin can do to 10 exit? Um, yes. Yeah, so, see, Slavin is, oh, one thing I'd mention is start connecting with more people. Um, 37 mm -hmm. is, is it too much? And the reason why I say that is um, there's a lot of bots on LinkedIn. Like people buy like purchasing, you know, people purchase likes and comments sometimes. Uh, it's not as dominant, as, as prominent on as Facebook and Instagram, but uh, who's to say like, um, I'd say 50 is a good threshold of like trying to get above that. And then also I see um, volunteer at that place. What about work experience? Are there any work experience uh, that you have? Mm -hmm. um, and then if that's the case, then 
add that after to your headline. Um, let's see, volunteer in the experience section. Is there anything else? Uh, okay, that's that's all we got right now. Um, so it looks like. Oh, right there. That's that's a great example of another thing that you can include in the headline is SQL, like certified SQL, like from Solo Learn, or you know, you can certifications and licenses that you that you get. You can put that in in your headline of like certified in responsive web design and SQL from Solo Learn or something like that. Um, and then one other thing, if you scroll up. Um, to activity section, it says Slavin hasn't posted recently, ha hasn't posted lately, but also it hasn't, he, uh, Slavin hasn't liked or hasn't commented on anyone's post lately. So this I think is within the last like 90 days or something like that. If I was a recruiter, I would be hesitant to reach out in the sense of um, if you were commenting, it, it would show like, oh, Slavin left a comment on someone's post one week ago or two days ago. That tells me like, okay, Slavin has been on LinkedIn in the past two days or in the past week. But as of this, I'm like, I have no idea when the last time Slavin logged on to LinkedIn was because yeah. it doesn't show any recent activity. And so if I send Slavin an email, he m might not respond because I have no proof that uh, they've been on LinkedIn in the past X amount of like 90 days. And so one way to get past that is I would say like a good best practice is leave like one comment every day on people's posts. Um, and then that will show, or even like every week that will show like your activity of um, w that you've been on the profile or are interacting with people and you're more likely to respond to emails if you get one. Got it. So recruiters know they won't be wasting an in-mail credit. <laughs> yes, for someone who we don't know when the last time someone was on LinkedIn. Uh, so that that's a great way to show like, hey, I'm on here um, and we'll respond if you get it, like if you message me. Totally. So well, that is all we have time for which means there are many profiles we haven't had a chance to look at, including people asking in the chat can you review it? But do not worry, we do plan to do more of these. Um, <laughs> and here is a little form you can fill in to share your profile. So I will have it ready for the future. Well, that was brilliant, Austin. Thanks so much for coming. Do you have any closing LinkedIn related thoughts? Ooh, <laughs> good, good question. First of all, I need to say thank you so much uh, for having me. Um, always love interacting with everyone. And like I said, I think Scrimba is doing an amazing job um, on YouTube, on Twitter, and all the tips that you're sharing for the community. I'm happy to be here. But yeah, I guess my, my tips, especially for people in the job search, would be don't, don't get discouraged, uh, especially on LinkedIn by how slow it can be at times uh, in the sense that if you get on Instagram or, or TikTok these days, you know, you can get hundreds of thousands of followers, get people like very quickly, but LinkedIn, it's very slow and steady. But over time, um, if you don't get discouraged and you could keep at it, you'll be um, you'll be where a lot of people wish they were if they didn't give up. Um, and so, yeah, don't, don't get discouraged. If you sometimes don't see the results, keep at it, uh, continue optimizing your profile, um, where you're comfortable. If you are comfortable posting content, highly recommend it. Even if it's like once a month, you know, once every other week, you don't have to post every day. Uh, I don't post every day. Um, but that's a great way to get your profile out there. And then, just interacting with people on the platform, you know, build those relationships and then see what happens from there. So many opportunities. Beautiful. Well, thanks again, Austin. It's been wonderful having you. And thanks to all of you watching and watching in the future. Hello from the past and bye for now. Thank you so <laughs> bye. much. <laughs> bye.